thank you so much. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, Angular laser loading. So a little bit about me. My name is Dimpar Vimpuda. I have a total seven years experience. Uh, in this about four years experience, just including Angular JS and Angular. Uh, I'm a senior front-end engineer. I work at Kaplan Test Prep. And some of my hobbies, I do e-skateboarding, skateboard. And I blog, it's my blog, blogger address. And I'm a gamer, so if you're never interested in gaming and all that, you can just immediately start playing PUBG and uh, just cast four. So if you're not interested, you can just send me a message at the red info, Arvin. This is my blog link. Uh, it's www.tecama.com. And if you have any questions or anything, you can just tweet me. It's at the red Arvin Buddha. OK, so before we uh, dive into Angular laser loading, let's see what kind of, what type of loadings available right now. So one is eager loading. Eager loading is like, it's basically default loading. If we default when Angular, when we compile code or something like that, it's basically load everything, kind of. It's, it's, it's eager loading. Laser loading, we're going to talk more about laser loading in a bit. And some interesting loading uh, types are prefetch, preload. Prefetch is like uh, when your browser done loading your initial, uh, initial page or something, then instead of uh, waiting or instead of a browser being idle, it can load the assets which user may visit in near future. So it's kind of like give the user best experience, so which is prefetch. Prefetch has some more subtypes, like um, it can, like, we can do something like DNS prefetch, pre-render, pre-render -pre prefetch. There are like a bunch of other prefetch types in prefetch. And preload is a little bit confusing topic even for me, because it's like uh, we, we're going to say something like load everything before even you start using the application. So if you have some assets in your page, it will just start loading everything. Uh, before you, user can interact with uh, with this page, uh, if you want to implement prefetch preload, uh, by default you have to like add uh, this real attribute, a real attribute, um, and uh, I'm gonna show it a little bit in Angular. How does it? Uh, how, how is it? We're gonna do it. Um, okay. So what is lazy loading? Uh, laser loading is basically a process of loading modules. Uh, modules could be anything. It could be your JavaScript file, it could be your CSS file, it could be your images or anything. Um, it's loading only when we need it. So we don't have to load our, uh, our files uh, before. We can load only when we needed those. If someone is watching video, so we can load only when they click on play. We don't have to load it just for rendering purpose, right? So basically, that's laser loading. And why do we need it? So while uh, I, I work at Captain Test Prep, right? So we have to deal with like hundreds of students. And uh, there is like a lot of factors that we need to evolve. Um, so one is like response time. Response time is not uh, how, uh, response time is not render time. Render time, response time are kind of different things. Response time is like when, when page is done loading, how long does it take for user to click on something or like interact with your page? That is response time. And then uh, resource consumption is, this is like a very recent study shows that 70% of your user give up on your web page if it takes more than three seconds. So, so these are like main uh, reasons why we have to laser loading. If we have laser loading, we can like uh, response, we can improve the response time because it's gonna load only what we needed. So it's like loading time is very less compared to normal or eager loading. Okay, so by, by default, if in, in Angular right now, if you have to implement laser loading, you have to do the laser loading th through using the uh, Angular rotor module. So if you want to implement, and if you are going to, uh, you have to impl implement something like future module, and then you have to, uh, you know, include your future module through load chain, and then this is how you have to do it. In Angular, before Angular 8, you have to do, this is the syntax, and after Angular 8, this is the new syntax. I think there is a reason why they moved from the this syntax to this syntax. Uh, I'm going to talk about it a little bit later, why maybe why they're doing it like that. Um, and then, yeah, before I talk about prefetch and preload, right? So if you have to implement prefetch and preload, 
this is something you need to do. Uh, while uh, configuring your uh, rotor module, you have to just pass in this in uh, extra options like preload strategy. You can say like preload all modules or even you can customize your preload strategies like with the custom, uh, custom there are some custom uh, class that you can write to load what are the, uh, what are the results that you want to load. Uh, so by using this, uh, I think you can like, uh, implement the preload strategy. Okay, so one limitation with uh, lazy loading is it's it's uh, tightly coupled with your rotor. So if you don't have routing, you can't do lazy loading, right? So that is kind of a um, difficulty uh, right now in Angular. If you are if you ever use Vue.js or React.js, I mean this Angular meetup, it's uh, they have very uh, simple uh, lazy loading concept. You don't have to use rotor or anything like that. You can very easily implement the lazy loading. Um, I think we can kind of do the same thing in Angular also. Um, so the reasons why we want to do lazy loading and uh, there are the dynamic component injection is something which we want to do. That means like if you want to inject some component without you don't have to uh, without using rotor or anything like that. Um, like for example, if you want to do uh, A/B testing or if you are using uh, web components, web components is not going to have any rotors or anything like that. Or if you're implementing any white label product, like see you have a white label product and you want to see how it's gonna look like when a, spe a specific tenant or company is applied to the white label product. Um, and the dynamic customization, uh, like if, if the user has to choose what kind of components to be displayed there. So in in that scenario, we, need, maybe we may need di uh, dynamic component injection. In Angular 6.7, uh, like 5.6.7, uh, we have, uh, like, there are some uh, uh, modules available. Uh, in a way, like, internally, they are using um, uh, Angular uh, Reactor Component Loader. So Reactor Component Loader is uh, something which I saw recently on Angular Connect uh, Meetup. So in Angular Connect, but I think it's like two, three years back, I guess. Um, but uh, they are using, um, in, in that they are using, internally they are taking advantage of Angular uh, routing module and they just using the router module to load the component without actually implementing routing. It's quite interesting, but I'm not going to talk, this is a very huge topic, I'm not going to talk about it right now. But if you're interested in, to, if, you, if you're still in uh, Angular 5, 6, 7, you can use uh, this React component loader uh, uh, component loader module available on GitHub. Uh, in Angular 8, we can take advantage of this new import statement. And if anyone doesn't know, import this import. If you use import keyword with the brackets as a function, uh, which is nothing but a dynamic import in JavaScript, ES6, ES7. Um, so you can, we can take advantage of this import syntax and then we can implement lazy loading in, uh, in, uh, in our uh, um, non-routing modules. Okay, let's just do some live coding. So I, can you guys see this? Okay, so in the last, okay, cool. So I already just created a um, uh, created um, uh, a application, so we don't have to waste time on installing N npm modules. So it's just a plain um, uh, just empty application which I created using uh, Norval NX tool. Um, I really like Norval. I'm not just talking about it because there are sponsors. I really even in at Kaplan Test Prep we use Norval. So this is plain uh, Norval application. I just already started running it. If I open it, so by default it's look like this. I think there is no internet, so I may just. Um, okay, so if I open my normal application, you'll see something like this. So um, it's in my app component dot HTML. So this is my uh, empty app component HTML. So now let's create some lazy module first. Um, I'm gonna create lazy module. I already did, so it's showing here. Um, so I just, uh, I'm gonna add a lazy module uh, using ng generators, um, lazy, and it just create module. And also I'm gonna add a module, uh, sorry, component. Um, I'm making it inline style, uh, and then template is, should be inline. Okay. So now if I 
open this. This is my new module. I have a lazy module component and spec file. Okay, so we don't have to touch these files now. Let uh, now if I now let me just do uh, let me just clean up this a little bit. I'm gonna remove. Okay, so. Okay, so let's just add a button tag here. And I'm gonna add a, uh, a, in, a click event on this. Okay, so, and also I'm gonna add a view reference. I have a div, and then I'm gonna have a, I'm just creating a local uh, difference template here. Okay, so now I have to implement the lazy load uh, component, and I go back here, and then I'm just, um, I'm gonna add lazy load. It's just a function. Okay, so I have a button and I created a click click function, and this is my function. I'm gonna use the import syntax. So import syntax is a uh, promise function, so I can do async await. I'm gonna do async await, and then if I import, and then lazy lazy module. And once I import it, I want to do something like, either I can equal that to some variable, but I'm going to do it in this way. And then I can do the initialization, which is same as the, the new uh, Angular syntax. So in new Angular syntax, if you are implementing router, you can do something like this, right? So this is same as that. So once I did this, let's see how it's going to work in our browser. Okay. This is, okay, and let's see, before I click, this is how it looks like, right? So I have style, and when I click on this, you should see this is being added. So the import syntax, it's gonna add that lazy load module, and it's just added into your actual HTML page. And also, if you see the network, yeah, this is the new uh, module that is being loaded. So right now we just loaded, uh, lo we just uh, loaded the JS file, but it's not doing anything. So once you have that, so before you do this, you have to, you, so we already created the view reference here. So idea is to, once you're done loading, you're gonna attach your new component to this, uh, this view reference. And in order to do that, we have to, um, I already have the, have those. So I have your reference. And also I'm gonna get my view reference here. Okay. And also I need a, um, I need a constructor here, so, sorry. Okay, so I need I need to use uh, component factory resolver and injector. So this I just injected those two services here, and then um, I need to import all of these modules. Okay, and just import everything. Okay, so I just imported all this in here, and let me save. Okay, have this. Okay, now I have a component factory resolver and injector. I just injected them, and uh, we have created a view reference in template. So I'm, I, I, this is a uh, we are we are referring that view reference here, and then once we have that.
Okay. So I just uh, pre-populated the template which I've created before. So uh, this is what we are going to do. So we are going to create a new create a new uh, element. Uh, it could be any element, we not necessarily this element. If you see this one, this is same as the lazy loader component that we have created. If you see this component, this is this selector. Uh, but we don't have to do that. We can even if you even did the div, it should work fine. And then we're going to create a factory using the component factory resolver, the resolve component factory. And then I need to import this and just imported it. And once you created the factory, you can create your component um, using the factory daughter create function. You have to pass in these parameters. So you're uh, passing your uh, injector, and then you're passing this. Uh, this some, I think this is some option. I don't even know what it is. And then I'm going to pass the, the DOM, um, the element that I have created before, so this element. And then once it's done, then I'm going to attach my uh, the new uh, component, new component reference to the uh, native elements of the uh, view reference. So if I save this, OK. So if I click on this one, so this component just attached to this one. This, um, this is just uh, normally if you just want to have simple components. But if you have component which is like need to access the properties of the component or something like that, all you have to do is to just enable, uh, you can use the component factory reference dot instance. So once you have instance, you will access, you can access all the properties. For example, if I'm just passing the title, uh, let's just say I want to just title or something like that. And in my component, it not it not necessarily have to be input event. Even if you use input event, it should be fine. But if I just add title here, title of string, and if I just add the reference here, Okay, so we just pass the property uh, to to the component. Um, yeah, that's it. So it, and also, if you see, uh, if you are adding, it's keep adding it because we are we didn't put any null check or anything like that. So if you, when do you want to add or not? Generally, it's it's uh, it's quite easy. Like you can uh, since you have access to the native elements, you can put some kind of null check like. So you can do something like this. Yeah. So if there is no uh, children, then only we want to add it. So I can do something like this. Okay, so now if I'm clicking on the ledger, it, it will add only once. Yeah, you can do a lot of other stuff too, um, but um, that's all. Yeah, I think that's all. Um, if you have any questions, yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Dimpu. Any questions? By importing the lazy component, aren't you actually importing the file and, and, and kind of skipping the whole lazy loading of the module to begin with? Because the whole point of lazy modules to load all these assets and necessary imports with it. But on the top of your app component, you imported the lazy component, which is actually going to be referenced later in the lazy load method. So that's going to defeat the purpose of lazy loading. Mm -hmm. You're actually including that, bundling that with your bundle. Mm -hmm. So it's not lazy loaded? So since we add the lazy load component, do you think it's going to import? Because it's not going to be, it's not gonna be it's tree tr 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 shaken, so it's going to be imported as part of the app component bundle. So, mm. you, so the, the only thing that's going to be lazy loading is the lazy loading module, but the component will be being reloaded because it was included 
is imported in the app component. Mm. Is, that, is that not right? Yeah, I'm not sure exactly uh, if that's correct. Uh, I don't know, like, for the straight answer, I don't know exactly if that's true. But I think, um, yeah, so when I, so I think in IV engine, it doesn't do that way. I don't know. Yeah, but it's a good question. Yeah, I need to get back to you. Like, <laughs> yeah. We can continue this conversation on Slack. Any hmm. other questions? When do you think about lazy loading components? Like, when is it a concern? Uh, in general, um, if you say thumb rule, if each file size must be less than two MB, so we generally do something like if if you're if you're uh, when you're uh, compiling your code, and if your if app dot min dot js file is more than two MB or something like that, you try to like you know uh, make your module much less size by you know creating sub module something like that. Um, it's it's up to you, like uh, depending on your uh, like your audience, how you want like speed wise and uh, where the region wise, and can do, I can even further like um, reduce the file size. Yeah. 